thinks the elephant in the room is what's arrived. Um, I actually uh, got one of those, the Hermes Light 2 SDR radios. I had SDRs, I mean, if you go right back through my channel, right back to the very beginning, you'll see the videos in 2015, 2016, I had the uh, LAD FM Duo SDR, really capable unit for the time. Um, it was great, had for three years, really, really, here's really, really well, but there was a big latency issue. So before I step into going into getting another SDR, whether I get a, an Anan or a Flex or something like that or a Sun, I thought I'd better dip my feet in, into the water before I commit a large sum of money to make sure the SDR is good for me. And what attracts me to the Hermes Light is it's actually pretty cheap. It's uh, I think it was about $580 landed here um, with the filter boards and with the, the enclosure. Um, took really quick. I could. DHL delivery from uh, China because no point waiting for the slow one when there's a 20 bucks difference. I just said, yeah, Santa here, and it came in within three or four days. So it was really good. And setting it up, I'll go through a few videos in a few minutes and show you a bit of the software that you can use with it. But setting it up is, um, building it was not, not too hard. I'm no, I'm no soldering king, really don't know that stuff very well, but it seemed to work. But what, um, setting it up. Um, to get it working online is really easy. It's just basically plug in the, the Ethernet cable and most of the stuff's there and it automatically self-detects. So really, really good. You don't have to deal with the, the USB cables all the time and stuff like that. So a really, really good positive way to connect it to the to it, into your network so that you can get access to it from the computer. I suppose you could do it from any room in the house too, but if you can get access to the computer, that's, uh, that's really good. Software, Thetis is uh, the benchmark a lot of people use for NNs and things like that. Seems to be very, very good. And also SDR console. So I do CW. I haven't done FT8 yet because I haven't even wanted to try it. It's more about receiving at the moment for me, seeing how it sounds, seeing how comfortable I am with the filters and with not having a VFO. I have been sneaky and I have ordered one, but uh, it hasn't arrived yet. It's coming probably might be a week or two away. So seems to be going okay. The filter uses are uh, much better and now my skill level is a lot higher. So I'm learning how to narrow the filters. Um, CW, so from the fact, from the box it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have a, a CW keyer in the actual radio, but you can actually key it. Um, there's a memory thing, but I think eight, seven or eight memories. You'll see that in one of the videos that I'm going to put up. So you can send your call, you can work at the expedition with this, no problems at all. Um, now power wise it's 5 to 7 watts um, which for me is okay I've got a couple of amplifiers I've got a small one which does about 100 120 watts um, which probably with 5 watts drive, probably on the high bands will be about 80 watts and maybe down 40 metres it might be 100 120 150 watts and 80 metres similar so it's something there but I've also got a bigger amplifier I've got rid of, I had a tube amplifier before and I've gone to a solid state I plugged it in with a solid state one, pretty simple to do, not hard. It's near the RX Kia. And um, we don't have any band switching capabilities, so it's all manual band switching. But uh, put uh, 5 watts in, got 400 out, which was perfect for here in VK with the 400 watt limit. And then I put 2 or 3 watts in, it was about 150 watts, which means you can just use it like a normal radio. So it's not like it's going to be you know, too loud or people are going to complain or whatever. So that was really good. Um, I used to go be possibly with tuning uh, if I need to tune the antenna, but I can always use the other radio for that. So it's been a, a really good experience with this. It's uh, it's nice, um, and um, yeah, my problem is now I've got to start delving into virtual audio cable world to get my audio going through it. I'm going to run through the rack for the time being. Um, I don't have a push to talk, but there is a, a uh, key in the front. I think I can use that for push to talk. I've got to sort of have a look at that. If that's sorted out, um, see if I can do that, that would be great. Well, there's the MOX on the actual software, which is fine. Um, I have had some audio going, but I'm having some issues with my audio cables at the moment. So I was only five watts and nobody could hear me, but it was putting out audio, which was good. So it was a, it was a, it was a sign that's working, but it's just a matter of um, I'm going to get all the rest of the stuff sorted out to get that working. So that's what I don't like about SDRs. So if you're like me, a good rig player, they're a great thing to have as a tool, 
and to use it and to muck around to experiment with. It's a lot of fun. But before you go spending big money, I think the Hermes Light is something you should really seriously consider. You can on sell them. People, a lot of people don't want to order from China or whatever. And I don't think it'd be a problem to move this along down the track. Delivery doesn't seem to be too much of a problem either. Uh, during COVID, I first looked at it probably 12, 18 months ago and you just couldn't get them and there was a long wait and I wasn't prepared for that. Um, sort of an instant gratification buyer, had to buy it and get it straight away. So anyway, so we got it all. Uh, I got it out. Uh, my friend told me they were pretty reliable and they were coming out quickly. He picked one up and uh, said, Steve, you've got to get one. So anyway, I got one. And yeah, as I said, quick, easy to put together. Uh, you have to drill one hole, have to put paste on the heat sink. It's not hard, there's a couple of videos on the, out on the internet to, um, to show you, but um, I'm not one to, to show you how to build it because I'm the worst person to do that because, yeah, no idea. Um, I did build it, it's fine. I still need to disassemble it and then put the thermal paste between the little shim that you put in there and the motherboard, which I didn't do. But I haven't transmitted a lot on it, so it's, I don't think it's been too much of an issue. So, there's some videos I'm going to bring and in some videos now where we go through the box and have a look at some of the the receiving. I've used the weather service that we have here in VK, um, which is basically um, it's programmed for marine weather down the east coast. There's one on the east coast, as well on the west coast a couple of times at night and during the day, so you can sort of hear the difference. Really good for the SDR to sort it out. A couple of channels there. It hasn't been a lot of uh, the, the band was actually dead when I made the initial videos there, but I'll put some in there so you can get an idea of what it's like. I did do some CW testing and did some uh, uh, sending some CW from it, so it was quite good. Big problem with it is no echo back. I've got to work on that. Some of the people, there's a companion board you can buy with this, um, and it's the same person makes a filter board, which is N2 ADR, I think it is, is it call sign? And that does have the echo back, but I've got a CW, where is it? I've got it here. Um, I've got a, um, a K, K1EL um, wind care. So I'm probably going to hook that up first and see, make sure, see if that works. If it works with that, then there's not even a need to go for the other thing. Receiver wise, pretty good. Um, and you can capture a lot of things with it. So, yeah, I think that's, that's really good. Um, another one which, um, piece of software to check out quickly if you get a chance is um, Spark SDR. If you're like me and you like doing a bit of FT8, but you also like to monitor other bands, and I like to go out and it's like 10 meters running and seeing what I heard when I come back. Um, so you can monitor three things at once, which is really interesting. You can monitor uh, FT8, FC4, and Whisper all at the same time on one of these Hermes. Which is really, really exciting. And if you put a biggest band in there, which I haven't worked out how to do quite as yet, but you can do up to 10 megahertz, so probably get two or three bands in there, which is great. Another drawback with the unit is no six meters. But you can find transverters around, and I don't know, I think the guy in the Ukraine started making them again, so you probably get one of those ones if you want to do um, six meters. Um, so quite interesting. And you can probably even do two meters with it. Which you start to look at it, really gives it another avenue and another level to, to go to. So I know we've all got 9700s for the VHF and we've got, you know, I've got the FTDX10 or the 101 or the 7300 or the 7610 or whatever. Plenty of SDR radios around, um, as in with a waterfall. But with this, it's more an interesting experience as well, but it's having the big screen there with the big waterfall there that you can adjust, you can change the filter bandwidth and things like that. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. Um, audio is fantastic. You can muck around with your ESSB if you want. I've got a few friends who are right into that. And, you know, they made, that's how I ended up with a rack. But And we're going to try to get that all hooked up so you can do ESSB. You can go up to 10 kilohertz wide, I think, you're transmitting, which is not legal in most places, but it's just interesting to be able to do it. Uh, but I've heard some really, really good audio with the using um, software uh, audio um, racks, which is interesting. So you don't have to invest so much money into the heavy into the other stuff. So basically, you can set up your radio with a um, with a microphone, and there's one one around um, which has um, some software that comes with it, so you can set up and do your ESSB and have some fun with that. Which is, to me, another aspect of the hobby, and um, I like to go down every rabbit hole that I can find, 
in this hobby and see and have some fun and try it all out. So, seemed pretty good. So, it's interesting. Anyway, I'll, uh, that's enough of an intro. Bored you for too long and talking too much, but hopefully you got some interesting information there and just a brief overview. Yes, I think it's great. Five watts is probably not enough, but it'll do. It's enough for an exciter to run a small amp. One of those small amps you can get off uh, eBay or uh, AliExpress or something like that or some of the proprietary ones with all the filters and everything. So I think that's really worthwhile and you can use that even if you need to if you've got a tube amplifier to kick it in. Um, it's got an RCA on the back which makes it really easy for connecting up to an amplifier for a push to talk. You can plug the RCA and plug it into the back of your AL811 and you won't put out much power but, you know, but if you've got a, uh, an exciter there um, to drive the amp a bit harder it's fine then you'll get your power out. Won't be an issue. And solid state amps, most of them don't run, need a lot of drive so you'll be putting out power okay as well. So it's good, it's simple, um, no power off switch so you've got to pull a plug out, it's not great but it's doable and yeah it's, it seems to work so I'm you know, I'm quite pleased with it, I'm not going to, as I said, I'm not going to go too de in depth in, it's just more of a review than anything to give you an idea but as far as service goes, everything goes, build, build um, level I'm a, a level two when it comes out of ten for um, my, my soldering skills and everything like that. Didn't need any soldering skills. Basically needed to drill a hole, put it together and just be careful and methodical. Watch a couple of videos three or four times and then you can assemble it. It's not hard to do at all. And I drilled the hole following the instructions and it wasn't a problem to put the bolt through. You'll need a 15 millimetre M3 uh, screw to put on the bottom to secure the shim in place. I went to the shop and got uh, three mil and six mil, uh, sorry, six mil and ten mil, which is just too short. So you're going to need a fifteen mil one and a little nut to put on top of it and uh, a washer preferably. Or you don't even need a washer, I don't think. So that's what will hold it in place. So remember that a fifteen mil M3 is a tiny little screw, but it wasn't that hard to overcome and get it all solved. All right. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the software and uh, and I'll get to uh, move on some. Uh, with some other things as well but yeah thanks for coming back and all those who have subscribed recently thank you very much it's appreciated and uh, I'll try and endeavour to get more content up for you all right. <laughs>